It is August 2020. This is Patty Scobie reporting to you from Concord, Michigan about printing by hand. In 2007, I was an artist in residence at Albion College in Albion, Michigan. My project title for the semester long residency was Lost with the Poets. Initially, I made small constructions, layering parts of old prints and painting them. When I felt stuck about what step to take next, I would read a poem or an essay. What I read informed the decisions I made while I worked on these constructions. I came to think of the writer's words as seeds and began using images of tiny seeds. While experimenting with hand printing techniques, I stumbled across a way of working that I hadn't used before. With a shaped plate under the paper, I rolled ink onto the surface of the paper using a brayer. For cutting the shapes of my plates, I referred to this book. The first seed shaped plates I made were cut out of old prints. Then I began using paper that I embossed using my linoleum blocks. Both sides of each plate are coated with dilute gel medium. The coating adds strength to the plate and makes it easier to clean. For applying ink with a brayer directly onto a sheet of paper, I have a glass slab for inking, a four inch and a six inch soft rubber brayer, a putty knife and ink. I will be using jet black Akua liquid pigment. I also have a piece of plexi with a registration guide taped to the back, some low tack masking tape, double adhesive, my printing plate, and paper. I've applied a small bit of double adhesive to the back of my plate. This will help keep the plate in position on the plexi. I will be using a dry piece of kitakata. One side of the paper is smoother than the other. I'll put that side up. To keep the paper in position, I've attached a bit of tape at each corner. To create a border at the bottom of the print, I am placing a strip of paper over the edge of the kitakata. This strip will help keep my paper from shifting. Because the pigment settles, the bottle of ink needs to be shaken for about a minute before it is used. I put this ink out yesterday so it would air thicken. I will use a smaller brayer to roll the ink out. Then with the six inch brayer, I will transfer ink to a second area on the glass. This will enable me to ink evenly and to control the amount of ink transferring to the paper. It also prevents the dip that is in the center of the brayer from being a problem. My approach to inking these prints is to apply a small amount of ink to the paper, gradually bringing up the image. As the image begins to develop, I gradually build up the amount of ink I apply.
The motion I use as I finish rolling over the plate is to prevent unwanted brayer marks. When I begin to roll, I am pressing downward and then I glide upward. After you charge your brayer, it helps to roll the edges of the brayer off onto a piece of scrap paper to prevent too much ink building up. I have a brayer mark here that I'll attempt to work out. I've taken the little pieces of tape off at the top and I'll continue to work on just this area to get those little marks to blend in. I want to finish off this area, but I think my brayer has a little bit too much ink on it. So again, I have a scrap piece of paper to reduce the amount of ink on the brayer. Now I can put some final touches onto the print. Okay, I think it's finished. I'd like to compare the print I just made with a previous example. This paper was made by Katie McGregor of Whiting, Maine. Even though it is a relatively thin paper, it is still quite a bit thicker than the Kitakata. It's interesting to see the difference the choice of paper makes. The print on Katie's paper is more diffuse and suggestive. The fibers in the paper interact nicely with the image. The example on Kitakata shows the details of the plate more clearly. I like both examples. I think of these pieces as portraits of the seeds. While making them, I used a variety of papers so that I could compare the results. Some were machine made, like this Somerset book. The Kitakata I use in the demo, and for this print, is also machine made. It comes on a roll. Other papers are handmade. I used both Western and Asian handmade papers. After making several seed portraits, I began to realize the technique of using a brayer 
directly onto a sheet of paper is akin to Chinese rubbings. The Chinese have been making rubbings for over 2,000 years. I wanted to learn more about that. Black Tigers by Kenneth Starr has been a valuable resource for me for learning about the Chinese method using ink dabbers to make rubbings. Based on the reading I've done in Black Tigers, I've made several ink dabbers, tried the traditional Chinese approach of dampening paper and tamping it down as well as using the dabbers to make the rubbing. This demo will be an example of my experimentation with these traditional techniques. For dampening the paper, I have the kitakata taped at the top. Using water, I dampen the paper over the shaped plate. Once the paper is dampened, I use a piece of absorbent cloth to get the excess water out. Doing this also begins to press the paper into the textured areas of the plate. For tamping, I use a brush with flat stiff bristles and a thin sheet of paper to protect the kitakata. The kitakata is now dry. I am using air-thickened Akua liquid pigment and have a small amount rolled out to transfer to the dabber. I get ink on the dabber and distribute it evenly on the glass. Then rub off any excess onto scrap paper. Like when using the brayer, I want to build up the ink gradually. Now that I have a base layer of tone, I'm switching to a smaller dabber. This smaller dabber should give me a little more control over the inking. I have a bit more ink on this dabber than I did on the larger one. I've taken the tape off to finish the top area with a lightly inked dabber.
I'm finished inking and ready to compare this result with the previous one. The process of tamping the damp paper creates a bit of embossment around the plate. Using a dabber, I am unable to obtain this effect around the plate that I get using a brayer. Using a dabber allows me to create a less even tone in the background. The details within this shape are clearer and less atmospheric. Here is a quick comparison of the three prints using dabbers on Kitakata, using a brayer on Kitakata, using a brayer on handmade paper. In this series, I combine using a brayer with dabbers. I printed these in 2010 during a residency at Eden Fred in Madison, Wisconsin, funded by the Terry Family Foundation. During the residency, I researched the life and work of Wisconsin poet, Lorene Niedecker. I begin printing with a brayer to obtain these shapes, spaces for the seeds. I finish with small dabbers to get these results in the backgrounds and the foregrounds. Recently, I experimented printing from this piece of Norway spruce. I tamped down the kitakata and used a dabber to pick up the texture of the bark. The kitakata was damp when I tamped it down and dry when I printed. It has a nice embossment on the back. I like the lively sculptural quality that the texture of the paper has now. In this experiment, I used a linoleum cut. In both examples, I've used a brayer. In this example, I dampened the paper, tamped it down, and let it dry before I applied ink. For this test, I've used a scrap of heavy paper with stick-on letters applied to it as my plate. I've printed dry both times. This was done with a dabber and this one with a brayer. During my residency at Albion, I began making collagraph plates to print in combination with the seed shapes. The background plate was made by wrinkling, manipulating, and gluing a thin sheet of paper to a board. The plate is then coated with gel medium. Before inking, the seed shape is attached to the board with double stick tape. At the end of my Albion residency, I made a book. I thought of it as a report of my semester at the college. The book is housed in a folder inspired by the school folders I used as a young student. The title is Findings, 1130-07. It refers to the findings made possible by my research and experimentation during the residency. The scientific manual I used in my research is a finding list of seeds. The words of poets were part of my findings too. I found the surface of the tables in my Albion studio to possess rich textures and gouged surfaces. They were evidence of years of use by students. To print, I attached paper to the surface of the tables. Using a brayer, I inked directly on the paper. This paper is gumpy silk tissue from Japan. The sewing is a simple pamphlet stitch. The 
paper for the wrapper and the book cover was made by Cave Paper in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Using a typewriter for the text, it is a combination of phrases. The first line of text is the title of my project. Subsequent lines are by Edmund Jabez, Lorene Niedecker, Edmund Jabez again, Michael Palmer, Lee Young Lee, and Rosemary Waldrop. Lost with the Poets. Overcome by the push toward an unknown. Life was sand fastened to water in each of its motions. A many-windowed sea. We wait for rain.